Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and today I wanted to talk about the new Drake fighter, the Buccaneer, and if you should end up picking one to add into your fleet. Now first off, this ship is in concept sale, meaning that you have until June 6th to end up picking one of these up. And it's going to cost you $110, but that's going to include lifetime insurance, hangar goodies, and item X, which is supposed to be a weapon from Voyager Direct that's going to be added in later. Now they didn't give us details because I don't think they know just quite yet, but I think it has to do with a poll that's included in this announcement on the forums or on the website if you decide you want to purchase this ship. Anyways, when we start talking about this ship, the real purpose here was to find a compromise to give to Cutlass owners for that fighter portion of what they wanted and what they were promised. And that ended up turning into a ship that is, you know, capable of, um, you know, well, I guess capable and really designed to complement all the other ships in the Drake line, which is going to include things like being a close-range support fighter for the Caterpillar, or a strike ship for a Cutlass, or a long-range escort for the Drake Herald. You know, the release documents state that this is designed to be a civilian alternative to ships like the Gladius or the Hornet, but when you compare these ships, the Buccaneer seems to be in a really good place. Now, the Buccaneer is almost exactly the same size as the Gladius, but it ends up weighing in at about 2,000 less kilograms overall. And in addition to being lighter, the Buccaneer also has TR-3 engines, two of them, compared to the TR-2 engines on the Gladius, and a whopping 16 maneuvering thrusters. Now granted, they're size 1 maneuvering thrusters, but that's a crazy amount of them. And when we read the, descrip the description saying things like, this ship is maneuverable and a joy to fly, I think they're really giving it the hardware to do just that. Now the Buccaneer can also end up carrying a larger shield uh, than the Gladius, which makes me look at these two ships and say, man, the Buck just outclasses the Gladius in just about every way. Now there could be other factors, such as it being a lighter ship, it may not have the same armor that the military Gladius may have, but then we read the description and see words like sturdy, designed to take a hit, rough and tumble. The description seems to suggest that it's a durable ship as well. Now granted, they mentioned on Reverse the Verse that it's going, to be, it's going to have weaker armor than the Hornet, but who knows by how much, and when we compare it to the Gladius, the Gladius is already weaker than the Hornet, so where does that end up falling in line? Now where things really start to get crazy with this ship is with the weapons. On the wingtips, you have fixed size 1s, um, and that ends up shipping out with long swords. Under the wings, you have two size 3 mounts, which ship with gimbaled badgers, um, which really could end up being fixed size 3s. And on the belly, you end up having a size 4 mount, which, if that's not crazy enough, comes equipped with two tarantulas. Oh, and missiles. It has uh, size 1 missile mounts. So this thing is clearly armed to the teeth, with up to six forward-facing weapons in the current iteration, and the potential for a size 4 on this thing. I mean, can you imagine a Revenant Gatling gun just hanging off the belly of this ship on a spider of this size it's crazy so um the buccaneer doesn't really come equipped with any cargo ability but in the info we got from cig over the last few days it does appear that the buccaneer is going to be the ship that's designed to kind of showcase how smuggling is going to work so that's an additional perk that you can add into this ship also weapon x could potentially be tied to interdiction on that size 4 mount and that could be another benefit of this ship that's kind of speculatory based on other things that have been seen thrown around, but it's worth considering. And when I look at the Buccaneer right now, I see a ship that's capable of dealing a crazy amount of damage, taking its fair share, while being fast, nimble, with long range, and an ability to kit out for close quarters, all while retaining the Drake theme of being cheap, and cheap to maintain and to fix. The only downsides at the moment is really a lack of cargo, and I don't really see any mention of stealth. Based on all of that, if you were to ask me, should you buy the Buccaneer, my answer would have to be yes. That being said, this ship is one that I advise you to buy with caution. Not because of what the stats are, but because it just looks too good right now. Now I'm hoping we get a lot of really good information in the Q&A documents that we're going to get at release, and I'll make sure to cover those when we get them, but there needs to be a balance in ships somewhere, and with what I see right now, the balance appears to be missing in favor of this ship just being a total beast. And that's one of those things that you should always do. You should kind of take it with a grain of salt because this is a you know a concept sale. Things are destined to change. But it's this ship is one more than any that I've seen so far that I think you need to be very cautious of because there's just too much going for it, not much going against it. So if you do jump in, and heck, I'm probably going to do it too, just know things that may change in favor of balance and gameplay. But where this ship stands today, it's easily one of the safest yes recommendations I've made to date. Um, you know, it's a really cool looking ship. I like the design. It's got a whole lot going for it. And it just seems like the type of ship I'd enjoy flying based on the speed and agility alone. 
So if you have questions on the Buccaneer, please let me know. Put them in the comments. Otherwise, um, stay tuned for a Q&A post that I'll be getting to whenever they get those released. Um, and that's it. So hopefully that helps you guys in your decision. I'll talk to you guys later. Take care.